Welcome to Nerd Sessions yet again. This week, we're going to be working on what I call a flat five triad. So this is not a diminished triad because we have a major third. So it's gonna be one, three, flat five. So it's gonna go like this. G sharp, C, D. So we have And that's a chord. Remember one of the earlier? Now you remember we went over that recently. So now we're gonna go through a little study and play all the variations. Now there's 12 scales we're gonna be using. Seven of them are major scale type of scales and then the rest of them, I don't really consider scales, but they're common and you've definitely used them before or at least heard of them before. So we're gonna go through all these options one by one, just so we could explore the sounds that are all possible. So for this type of triad, we're gonna go through every possible sound you can starting right here with the Lydian mode sound with a C sharp major scale. Up a half step. So if we have that major third right here, that's going to be the harmonic minor for C. So this is like a leading harmonic minor sound. Now we're going to play the melodic minor on the flat second. So this is going to be different uh, sounding. Might might suck. We're going to try it out. So the flat second here would be our A. So A major scale with the flat third.
fan of that. It sounds like I could use that for some tension in a song, though. I just wouldn't lay on it too long. Like, right now, melodic minor is also up a fifth. So that would be our fifth beat right here. So this would be our D sharp or E flat melodic minor. I can see so, maybe screw around a little bit with that one. <laughs> now we're going to play some melodic minor on our sixth. So this is going to be F melodic minor. Um, it's going to be weird because you're going to get this. It's going to sound a little bit like whole tone. Um, so here's how this is going to work out. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that E sound. So now it works over this new tonal center. So we have this five thing, creating tension, kind of work temporarily, right there. Not too bad of an idea. Now we're going to be playing the harmonic major scale in the third. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go back and watch the other nerd sessions. You got to do these things in order and have fun with it. All right, so on the third here, that means we're up here, harmonic major. Personally, you know, it's got that. Let's do the blues on a flat five. So this is going to be D blues. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Of course it contains the chord, but the typical blues phrasing you would play is not going to work because you want to resolve to the 1 flat 7 and flat 5 will be blues, so you could do it with it. Alright, now you can go up to your third and play Hungarian minor, so this will be our C, Hungarian minor. Alright. 
Not too bad. Then we have Hungarian minor on the F sharp. So that'd be a flat seven Hungarian minor. Then we have whole tone on the root. All right, so you have this. Not a big fan of the whole tone either. Now we're gonna play diminished half whole step on there. This is the last one of all the options that'll ever fit this chord. So all the options in the world, scale wise, we're, we just went through every one of them except for this last one. So my favorite of all these options, there's a couple cool ones and there may be one or two. I think that Lydian mode sounds great. And then the harmonic minor version of Lydian that we've done. So straight up Lydian. having fun. Don't, don't forget, you can always throw chromatic passing tones on weak beats. So if you went... Harmonic minor and C was something else I liked.
Now don't forget you can also avoid notes of your major scale to get a different sound quality. Don't forget, just because these are the options doesn't mean that you can't get a different sound with the same option. So if you took this C sharp major scale and went and avoided some of those notes, you could do this. So we have Alright guys, just remember to have fun with this stuff and explore a little bit. So remember that the way you phrase makes a big difference. So you want to stick these chord tones. When you're phrasing. Alright, so have fun with this. And I'll see you guys in the next nerd session. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, comment as well. Now remember, this is every possible option for this chord. Um, again, you could take notes away from the options, but this is it. This is it. So it's not that bad. I mean, you just pick, pick the ones you like and explore those and say, all right, now you know I could do that over this uh, chord. Where, whenever it comes up in a song, you can give it a shot and see how it works in the context of the chord progression or piece of music you're in. All right, so be sure if you want to work on your picking to check out my picking program. Uh, it's kind of what I have going on in the background for a few years now. It's called the Ultimate Picking Program. You go to ultimatepicking.com and it's artificial intelligence that figures out what you personally need to do to get better at picking on the guitar. And then it tells you what to practice and it tells you what speed. It knows how fast you personally should be able to do something based on how quickly you can do other things that might seem unrelated to you. And it's essentially really smart and it helps you get better at picking. If you want to get your picking up to speed, that's the, it's gotta be the best way in the world to do it. Everybody's happy with, with using it. It works well. You just have to go on there and practice normally. You don't need, by the way, people have been asking me a lot, does it need a web camera or a microphone audio input? No, it doesn't because it knows what the sample set is. So it basically it knows what the exercises are that it's gonna test you on. Because of its knowledge of the exercises, it already knows what to expect from humans. And then the data that it collects is your tempo. So you just go in, you practice with the metronome, and then you say, okay, that's good. You click the pick and say, I could do it at that tempo. That's my best for today or whatever. You click it, and then it goes through and it uses that data every time you do that to figure out more about you. But people who use the program gain lots of speed quickly. Uh, more quickly than anything else they've ever done because this targets, pinpoint accuracy targets your exact problems. It'll notice if you're doing one particular thing that you haven't noticed before. Um, and that's what's, that's what's so cool about it. And you don't have to waste time screwing around. With, nobody wants to spend a bunch of time practicing their picking. That's stupid and boring. And playing around with this, you could do that for hours and you probably jam for hours and have a great time over the backing track I'm giving here. Um, but besides that, if your picking isn't up to par, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble on certain things you wanna do. Uh, and to fix that, grab the picking program and practice to it, get it out of the way. You don't have to do it forever. You just wanna get your picking up to a really good tempo where you don't have to think about it anymore. But if you wanna support uh, these videos that I've been working hard at getting to you, um, grab my picking program. It's gonna benefit you anyway. And plus that's, I take the money generated from that to allow myself 
to buy a camera, for instance, the one you're seeing me through right now, to get you cooler videos, better quality videos. Maybe I'll get a second camera in the future. Uh, if I'm able to do that, that'd be awesome. You get different angles up close. Subscribe and share the videos. Go on some kind of guitar groups or forums or something. Uh, if you think people might be interested in these improv or backings and they, they want to jam over this and learn a different way to approach playing the guitar that they haven't screwed around with before, it's totally awesome to do that. I mean, if you're stuck doing just one scale all the time, you're going to get pretty stagnant. I mean, you could do a lot with one group of notes a ton actually because the way you phrase makes a huge difference but having these extra options that you might not have heard before might open you up to different sounds in different phrases for your even your basic even if you're sticking to pentatonics this might open you up to different ideas with your chord progression to play the pentatonic if you want to be a guest on nerd sessions let me know send in a message and we'll see about what you could do because maybe we'll do something fun together Maybe we'll be in a movie together or something. All right, this is Alan Van Wert signing off. See you next time.